This is Mrs. Jones, and I'm going to be talking to you today about velocity and speed. So first we need to talk about what is motion. How do you know that something is moving? Um, so motion is any movement or change in position. So we're going to be looking at our skateboarder here um, to talk about how we can tell that this guy is moving or that he was moving when these pictures were taken. So the first thing that you need to do um, is you need a reference point and you need an object. So our object is the skateboarder and our reference point is going to be the cement slab that he is landing on. Um, and your reference point is usually going to be something that's not moving, like a wall. So then what you do is you look at the object in relation to the reference point. So here's our starting point of our object. And then if we look here, right, he's in a different position. So we can tell that he is in motion. He's moved from here to here. And then the same thing here. So now he's down here on the ground. We can tell that again that he's moved. Um, so we're watching for a change in position of the object, our skateboarder, in relation to the reference point, this slab. And again, we don't, uh, we don't have to sit and think, hmm, let me find a reference point. We will just automatically um, be able to make that judgment, generally speaking. So the question is, how fast is the speed of a cheetah? What's a speed of cheetah's top speed? 74.6 miles per hour. How about the speed of the Ferrari, La Ferrari? 209 miles per hour. Obviously not street legal, but that is the highest that it can go. How about this guy? Um, he's this, what's the speed of the world, the fastest man in the world? 10.38 meters per second. So for every second uh, that he's running, he can travel 10.38 meters. So what is speed? Speed is how fast an object is moving. We can also say it's the rate at which an object covers distance. So a fast moving object, which if it was a car and it was moving 85 miles per hour, um, it is an object that has a high speed, so it covers a relatively large distance in a short amount of time. So I think we could all agree that a car that's moving 85 miles per hour would be a fast moving object. So if we have a car that's traveling at 25 miles per hour, we would consider that a slow moving object. It has a low speed, so it covers a relatively small distance in the same amount of time. So if we were on a racetrack and we had our car that was going to go 85 miles per hour and our car going 25 miles per hour, the, and we were timing them for one minute, the car traveling 85 miles per hour would cover a larger distance than our car traveling 25 miles per hour in that one minute. How about a car that's not moving? Any non-moving object has a zero speed. So if we're measuring speed, the formula for speed is distance divided by time. So it's how far an object travels divided by how long it takes the, app, the object to get there. Some common units that we see for measuring um, speed are miles per hour, which we abbreviate MPH, which is used in the United States. And that is the English or customary form of measurement for speed. Um, so just like we talked about with feet and miles and yards and things like that being part of the customary system, miles per hour is also part of the customary system. You'll also see kilometers per hour and that's used in any country that uses the metric system. It's abbreviated KM for kilometers slash and we read that as per and then the H for hours. So if you go somewhere, um, you know, on the border of the United States and Canada, you might see a sign like this showing both the English speed limit and the um, metric speed limit. And that's just to help out people because there's so many people traveling back and forth. What we're going to be using in our class for our purposes is meters per second. 
we're going to abbreviate that m slash s. And this is used to measure speeds over shorter times and smaller distances. And we'll be using this again in our class because what we're measuring um, are things from a, a very small distance and in a relatively short amount of time. So be familiar with meters per second because that's generally what you're going to see with our data. So how do we use a stopwatch? <clears throat> what do all these numbers mean? So this is an iPod um, screenshot or an iPhone screenshot. So we're looking here, these numbers to the right of the decimal point, the 49, that's hundredths of a second. And then the 40 here, that's whole seconds. And then the numbers to the left of the colon, the two zeros here, that would be minutes. So this timer timed 40.49 seconds. That's how you would read that. Now if we look over here at the micron timer, um, which is the timer that we use in class. These two numbers that are smaller um, and to the far right of the screen, those are your hundredths of a second. The two and the seven, um, which are to the left of the two little asterisks, but to the right of the one asterisk, um, those are your whole seconds. And then the numbers, the two numbers, so right here, the zero and the one, which are to the left of the apostrophe, but to the right of the colon. Those are your minutes. And in this timer, this the zero here that's to the left of the colon, um, that's showing hours. So this timer could show you um, hours. This one only goes up to minutes. So what is velocity? Um, there is a difference between speed and velocity. Uh, velocity is the rate at which an object changes position. It is similar to speed, because you're probably thinking, okay, isn't that what speed is? Um, but it must specify direction. So we're looking at these two people here. Um, the man, his speed is five kilometers per hour, but his velocity is five kilometers per hour east. The woman, her speed is also 5 kilometers per hour, so they have the same speed, but her velocity is 5 kilometers per hour west, so they have different velocities. So an example, again, of velocity is 25 miles per hour north. So again, it's any speed in a given direction. <clears throat> 